Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Munson. I am the play-by-play uh, -play voice for the Clemson Tigers and excited to be part of this here today. You're going to love the movie when you see it. I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to watch it actually last night with my family at home. And I can tell you, as being part of the Clemson family and part of the Clemson community, it was absolutely wonderful. I mean, just absolutely wonderful from uh, from that standpoint. So, um, you know, at this at this point, I guess we need to go ahead and and maybe introduce uh, the folks that we're going to bring in and and be part of all this. We'll start with uh, the man that plays Ray, and that's uh, Jay Reeves. So uh, we'll welcome uh, Jay in, uh, Thaddeus Mixon who plays Famar uh, and does a wonderful job of playing Famar, having known Famar and, and also Ray. Um, Corinne Fox, who plays the, uh, the character of Casey, uh, we'll welcome her in. Also Hunter Sansone, who is the roommate, uh, Daniel Morelli, uh, we welcome Hunter. And then the uh, director, uh, Reginald Hudlin, uh, our producer, uh, Mark, Chiardi, we'll welcome him in as well. And of course, the man himself, uh, Ray McElrathby, is also uh, with us, who all of this is, is based upon. So uh, good to see everybody. I, I, I'm glad that we have at least one of us that has bought into the holiday spirit. That would be Corinne. She's got the Christmas. <laughs> there we go. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we have one of us that has, has done that. Always, always leave it to the woman in the room to bring right. the festivity <laughs> to the house. I mean, there that's we go. the way that it is. Uh, so um, absolutely. So, um, and, and guys, before as we, and if you want to obviously ask a question, you can uh, submit that and we'll, We'll get to you and then uh, allow you to uh, to do all of that uh, from uh, from that standpoint. So um, as you type all uh, questions in in and Jay, let me just start with you. Um, first and foremost, you know, playing this role of Ray, um, you know, when you got the script and you saw all this, you know, just tell me your excitement that, that you had with with making this film. Oh, man, ever since day one. Oh. I was overwhelmed with the excitement. It was it was crazy. I remember reading the uh, description of uh, the role and the story and dropping everything in that moment. As soon as I got the, the audition material, I was like, hey guys, I gotta go home. And all my friends were wondering why I skated out of there, but this story was just so impactful to me that reading the description made me leave everything and go pursue it. So I'm so grateful to be a part of this project. It's amazing. Well, it, and it, it is, it's, it's, it's uh, just been absolutely fun as we've been here at Clemson to, you know, obviously for me, the highlight was watching the shot actually in the stadium at halftime of the game when, when all that went down and all of our fans stayed there and it was a packed house that night. Uh, anyhow, Mark, from, from your standpoint, can I ask you about shooting it at halftime and, and just the way that it seemed like, you know, Clemson just enveloped you all and really embraced this project? Yeah, the school was absolutely amazing and supportive from from the very beginning. You know, we had reached out to, to the school, Tim Match, obviously, um, the whole AD department. And it was a big kind of military operation to, to pull off that, you know, that seven to 10 minutes, whatever it timed out to be. But, uh, you know, we were, I was up in the booth with you guys. It was it was spectacular to watch from my angle. Everyone had their own perspective of it. But, uh, yeah, the school was amazing. You, you, you had to have that support to pull off something like that. Well, watching the film last night, I mean, it 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 looked unbelievable uh, with 80,000 people packed in there and the noise they were making and stuff. It, it was it was outstanding. All right. Let's go to our first question. And it's going to be from Alex Ree from Laughing Place. So, Alex, we'll allow you to, to come in and ask a question. Hi, everybody. Love the film. Um, my question is for Reginald Hudland. Um, I was really impressed by the rotating shots in the dorm room in the beginning. And I was curious to know how complicated those were, were to set up and how that shot, how those shots were achieved. That was really cool. Yeah, that was crazy. I love that <laughs> shot so much. I'm so proud of it. Uh, and I really have to give praise to Shane Hurlbut, who's my cinematographer. He was a real partner in crime in terms of like, okay, we can shoot things the conventional way, but why would we do that? Let's really convey the mindset of these guys, you know, waking up at these ungodly hours and getting up and getting going. So we set up this rig that, uh, you know, went around, but the trickiest part is <clears throat> we had to move both of the walls to the side. So one wall was out, 
right? And the camera starts. And then we have to slide that wall back in and then move the wall on the other side so that the camera could be there uh, uh, on the go around. So it was, this was where a film crew really has to work as a single piece. The camera operators, um, the riggers who are moving walls and the actors who have to ignore all that craziness that's going on and just act like, yeah, I'm waking up in the morning, I'm tired. And <laughs> it was a case where it was perfect. You know, a, a shot like that could take all day. We knocked it out in no time. So it, it was a real credit to the entire cast and crew working in sync. Our, uh, our next question is going to be from Tessa Smith from Mama's Geeky. Tessa? Hi, I got a question for Ray. I just want to know what it's like to have a movie based on you. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a surreal experience. It's a wonderful experience more so than anything. Uh, it was something I've been praying for, one would say. Um, so I'm blessed and excited to have the opportunity to be here with all the people that are assembled to make this cast and crew and um, to be part of my life forever more in, uh, in, the, in the future, because this is it's something I could never thought of. And it's, it's surreal is the word I will use for how I feel about this situation and having a movie about my life. But I'm 34, so hopefully I can get something else going on too. <laughs> Ray, you're still a babe. Believe me, you're still you got a lot, <laughs> lot of life for you still to go and and have ahead of you. All right, we're gonna go, and I hope I get this name right because I'm afraid I'm gonna for I'm gonna butcher some, but I'm gonna try my best. Just being a little boy from from Clemson, South Carolina, but Stanislas Eid from Metro Belgium, you are up. Yes, hi. This is a question for Jay. I was wondering. Uh, how much you knew about the real story before getting involved in making the film? Um, well, I actually didn't know anything. Uh, going into it, uh, I started my research as soon as I got the material. So watching uh, the YouTube videos and then also uh, I followed Ray before I even got the role. I followed him <laughs> on Instagram just to, uh, you know, get a little bit ahead. So um, I really didn't know anything about it. I just dove in head first and, uh, got to know this fantastic story. How about Jim Fry from D23, Jim? Hello, yes, this is Jim, D23. My question is for Ray Ray. Hey, Ray Ray, I'm, I'm actually from the area. My niece is at, at Clemson right now. I just wanna know a little bit, like can you talk a little bit about your background growing up and did you always want to become a Clemson Tiger? Um, background growing up, I grew up in the city of Atlanta. Um, born in Chicago, Illinois, but raised in the city of Atlanta. Um, I stayed with various coaches, so I kind of bounced around a little bit when I was younger. Um, Clemson came about late my senior year. I actually attended a football camp at Clemson that my trainer and some other coaches um, sponsored for me, and I was able to receive a scholarship while I, while I was there at the camp at the uh, Coach Bowden. Uh, was offered me a scholarship, and Billy Napier was actually a, a graduate assistant at the time, and now he's offense coordinator, so it was that long ago, um, and that's kind of how it came about, but there was a gentleman named Burden Burns, who was the running back coach, who recruited me and made Clemson the family. He, he was able to portray the family atmosphere that Clemson has come and to always, well, what I've come to always know Clemson to be, so it was it was a combination of things. And it was one of the better decisions that I made in my life. And Burton actually now is the running back coach for the New York Giants. Uh, has a former Clemson player, Wayne Gallman, there playing running back uh, for him. Thaddeus, let me let me ask you if I can taking on the role of young of of Faymar. I mean, you're I mean, young guy. You have to. I mean, just tell me about embracing that role if you can in this thing. Well, yeah, I really wanted to show like how Faymar felt on screen and just make sure it comes across the right way. Also, I didn't know that it was based on a true story till I got on set the first day. So I started searching and looked at uh, uh, Oprah Renfrey interview that they did. And I just wanted to try to embody that as much as I could. And I actually almost cried from just watching it because you could just see the pain. And I know he went through a lot. 
So, yeah, I just wanted to show that on screen. Hunter, Hunter, for you, the thing that, that really kind of stood out to me was your very first scene with Jay, all right? when It's the roommate <laughs> scene. When you when they comes in, talk about the, the chemistry between you two because it looked like it quickly developed for you. Yeah, you know, Jay and I had the chemistry from day one, I, I like to think. Um, I, I always think about our first chemistry read together. I, I pulled up to a building for an audition and I was parking my car and I see him walking into the building and I'm like, that's the guy who's playing Ray. So I run up to him, I'm like, hey man, I'm reading for Daniel, how you doing? He was like, whoa, 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 like what's going on here? And we automatically had that Daniel Ray dynamic from day one. He was like, all right, dude, like I'll see you in there, good luck. And sure enough, one thing led to another and we ended up doing the film together and uh, we really had that chemistry from from the beginning. Uh, next question is going to be from Laura Sirical from uh, the Nerds of Color. Laura, hi. Um, so, uh, just wanted to ask a quick question to um, Mr. Hudlin and um, Mr. Sadar. Uh, sorry, Asiadi. Um, there's so much in the real story and the pro process in the story. Was there any part that of the story you wish you could have added? Maybe the late. Gaines Adams or C.J. Spiller? Uh, you know, I, I can start with that. I mean, you, you're, the best thing to do with a movie is try to contract the story, you know, uh, and, and, and have it in a, a smaller amount of time. And I think really with, with our movie was about maybe a two, three month period. You know, it's, it's you know, there's so much in, in Ray's story, even that, you know, we couldn't get to, but, you know, in structuring uh, a movie, you have to be, you know, kind of uh, really judicious about, you know, what you want to focus on. I mean, God, our first cut was over three hours. So, you know, Reggie can talk about that. We couldn't even fit what we had in the movie into the movie. We had two movies. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that was the amazing part. Um, uh, Mark is exactly right. You have to be focused about what you're telling. You know, Ray's had a momentous life. Uh, and so many incredible things have happened to him uh, before the events of the movie, after the events of the movie, um, as Ray will tell you, I'm not a movie, I'm a miniseries. Uh, but, um, you know, even with what we shot, you know, we ended up having to cut wonderful, incredible scenes out because, you know, you go, well, what are we saying? What are we saying? We have to get to the point of the message of the movie. And one of the things that's been most gratifying is that people see the movie, they laugh, they cry, and I go, that's what I want. If you're laughing, you're crying, and you're feeling inspired, then we've done our job. Corinne, can, can I ask you about your, your character development through all of this? I mean, it, again, the chemistry between you and Jay turned out to be, I thought, just absolutely marvelous. But... I mean, you could you could see it. It was almost like as I was sitting there watching the movie, you could see yourself developing even as a student on the Clemson campus and and learning kind of what Clemson family was was all about as you went as you went through it. Yeah, well, um, the interesting part about my character, Casey, is she's one of the one of the characters that's actually not based on a specific person. I remember asking Ray, hey, you know, who's the real who's the real Casey? And he goes. There's a lot of girls that are going to think they're <laughs> so, um, Real composite character. So, so we started with that. But, um, you know, I was really attracted to the role because I have two little sisters that are 12 and 13 years old, and I could only imagine what I would do for them. I would do absolutely anything for them. And so I think that's what attracted me to this story and then building out Casey. And, you know, she's a sports reporter. She's super persistent. She's determined. And I'm very similar to her in that way. But... Um, you know, she's also a little bit more bold than I am. And so that was really fun to play with. And then obviously the chemistry I have with Jay, we did our, our chem test. And I remember leaving going like, that went really well. That went really well. And obviously it did because I got the role. Uh, so it was such a great experience. And I was the only, the only girl except for the woman who played uh, Ray's mother in the cast. And, and everyone just huddled around me. And I felt very safe. <laughs> Ray, I had no idea that you were uh, that you dated so many women when you were here at Clemson. I had a, I had a boy. A lot of Casey's. Boy, Ray. No, not exactly. That that's not that's not the the what I meant by that. But yeah, <laughs> I love great, it. Great people. 
<laughs> let's go to uh, let's go to Neeson Williams from that hashtag show. I have, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I have a question for Jay. The scene that where you um, were signing the papers to to get your brother from your mom. It was to me it was the most powerful scene in the film. Um, it tell me about the prep to that scene. Tell me about the day. Just how did you go about getting ready for that particular scene? Well, uh, prepping prepping for that scene um, actually came with the script. You know, uh, I believe in starting with the paper. But then, of course, as I got to know Ray, I would just dig in his brain. And I didn't want to ask him like specific questions like that because I wanted to feel it for myself. I didn't want him to give me the easy answer to what that might have felt like. So I remember on the day I was actually sitting in the corner with uh, Thaddeus and he's just having, you know, he's just being himself and having a great time. And I got this heavy seed to do. But I think that helped me a lot, you know, sitting over there with him and his father and seeing their relationship and then putting myself in this position where I have to sign over for something like that, for that same type of responsibility, just hit my heart. And I just tried to be honest, just tried to be honest in what I would really feel like in that situation. And I, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Tody Padilla from Cool Mom's Cool Tips, who has a question, I think, for Thaddeus. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for the movie. It's really incredible. And my question for you, Thaddeus, is what would your message be for children or kids your age that are out there having a very tough time like your character was? Yeah, you know, if you're going through something like that right now, especially as a kid, just don't give up and just keep going because eventually there will be something that will be very good that will happen. So just don't give up. Hmm. Good answer, good answer. Jay Hunter and Thaddeus, can I ask you about the question about the scene where you basically throw him into an equipment bag and have to carry him <laughs> around? I mean, for Thaddeus, first and foremost, what's it like being in an equipment bag with these two guys carrying you around? You know, <laughs> see, I, so I wasn't in the bag for a couple of the scenes, like going to the bathroom, but when we got into the bathroom, Jay actually had to put me down. So I was actually in the bag at that time. So it was pretty funny and really cool to be lifted up. So it was I, pretty nerve wracking. I say it was nerve wracking, you know, to have this guy in there. I don't know how, Ray. I don't know how you did it, <laughs> but that thing is it's nerve wracking, you know, to be responsible for somebody like that and hide them like that. Ask Hunter. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, Ray def Jay definitely had a lot of the pressure. When I was carrying the bag, I I'm pretty sure we just had a dummy in there, so I didn't have to worry about that. But I did kind of show that it was a, it was a little heavy. But Jay was the one who had to really carry this boy. Yeah. It wasn't easy, <laughs> but I think it was pulled off. And I think if it, it there may be a shot in the bathroom where he was actually in the bag, and I think that may be the take they used because you really see him struggling with it. I'm not sure. <laughs> Wrong, Reggie, but I, I think it may be the actual take. I don't know. <laughs> well, Hunter, you, you sold it well. I must admit, I got a little concerned when you did the little stumble back through the door. I was like, is he going down? Or I mean, exactly what's going to happen? But no, it was it was a, a great scene from uh, there. All right, let's go to uh, uh, Simon Vaness from Attractions Magazine. Hi there. I mean, this is a, a really a, a question for, for Reginald, um, because of the sort of iconic sports-based movies we've seen in the, in the past, like Remember the Titans and Rudy as obvious example, how aware were you in advance that you're adding to this you know, extremely illustrious lineup? Yeah, I mean, there's so many great sports movies going back to Brian's song and, you know, uh, as you said, Remember the Titans and uh, Friday Night Lights and, you know, so all, you know, so, you know, if you do it well, you can uh, really resonate with audiences. The trick is, what new do you have to say? It's not, you know, it's not about, oh, let's just do what they did. Fortunately, we had a true story. So we really, it was really invaluable to have Ray, you know, involved in the entire process and having Ray on set uh, for, 
my sake, for the sake of the cast, you know, we could all talk to him and be a touchstone and say, what new do we have to say? What new do we have to contribute uh, to this rich uh, genre of motion pictures? And, um, you know, and, and that's what makes me happy. You know, it, you know, everyone who sees safety goes, I like this movie. Uh, and yes, it's part of a tradition, but I think Ray's story is unique and has something uh, special to say. And that resonates with everyone who sees it, no matter who they are, no matter where they're from. Let's go to uh, Caitlin Harrington from the Anderson Independent Mail. Hey, this question is for Ray. Uh, for those of us who are nearby Clemson and remember this story and people who were here when you were here, uh, what surprises are in store in the film? You know, how much of this was changed, whether it was for theatrics or logistics? Um, as far as what was changed, maybe nothing that you all would notice uh, as far as changes, because I think what changed more so is the things that we had to cut out. As they mentioned, we had to get the time down from three hours to two hours. Um, but there's there's so much more, I think, that they tried to, that they needed to capture as far as Clemson is concerned. You'll see the campus, you'll see things on campus that you'll notice. And just from all the stadium footage, it's, just, it's, just, it's during the game in Death Valley. And for me, it takes me back to the moment, takes me back to the times that I, I spent at Clemson. And so I hope it does the same for you. Go to uh, Tanya Lamb from Lola Lamb Chops. Hi there. So this question is for Reginald and Mark. Uh, this story is so inspirational. And so how do you choose whose stories to tell and why Ray Ray's? Well, well, I guess, you know, I can start with that. Uh, when this story happened in, in 2006, that's, that's when I uh, got a hold of the rights. You know, I, I watched like many people, uh, the, the national pieces on ESPN, on ABC, the Oprah Winfrey show. And I, I was really, really moved by it. And uh, when you can feel something by watching a two or three minute clip, you, and then you start to peel back the layers of what the story is. I was just incredibly moved. And, you know, you just have to go off your gut and your instinct and, and uh, you know, uh, told the story that, you know, we set it up at another studio back in 2006 and developed a screenplay. And, you know, I thought it was pretty good. And, uh, came close to making it and just didn't happen. And uh, when when Disney Plus announced their platform a few years ago, we brought it over and, and and thought it could be a great movie for them. They agreed, and and that was it. We brought in you know Randy McKinnon to 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 write some more, and then uh, hired Reggie, and and you know just got this charmed uh, you know uh, path to production and cast it really well. But you have you just have to go off the of instincts. You know, there's a lot of great stories out there. You got to figure out what's a movie, what's not a movie. Um, you know, there's no real science to it other than your gut. And for me, I was fortunate enough to benefit from Mark's you know, hard work over all these years. So I get this script, I'm reading it 20 pages in, I stand up, I start pacing around and my wife is like, what's wrong? I'm like, this is good. <laughs> so I read another 40 pages, like take up going to work. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I just really related to Ray's story. Uh, you know, I'm from a small town in the Midwest, all black, you know, economically deprived, where, you know, it takes a lot of energy to get escape velocity, to, to create opportunity for yourself. And Ray had it, you know, tougher than most. And he's a guy who made a way out of no way in a situation where failure was not an option. And I think, you know, that's a really important message. And I knew it was especially important for the times we're living in. Because right now we've got a country that's really torn apart. And what Ray represents, he represents integrity because he succeeded while maintaining a focus on education, a focus on excellence, which in his case was on the playing field, and most importantly, taking care of his family. And I think those are values that we all think are important. I don't care who you are, or where you're from. So if we can come together focusing on those values, I think, that starts to heal and rebuild our society. Our next question is gonna be from uh, Lupe Haas from Cinemovie TV. Hi, how are you guys? Um, you guys made me cry. I love this film. 
<laughs> Jay and Thaddeus, oh my God, your, your relationship on screen is wonderful. And my question is, Jay, what was the first thing you asked Ray? And then Ray, where did that drive come from? Because in the film, it doesn't seem like you have any role models. Mm. <laughs> well, the first question I asked him, and he probably won't remember, I know it. I asked him what high school he went to. Um, because my brother grew up in Atlanta and my brother was like, hey, you playing this guy from Atlanta? I said, yes. He said, well, what high school he went to? I'll tell you what he's like. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so I asked Ray and Ray said, I went to Mays. And my brother's like, oh, he was taken aback. He was like, oh, be careful, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I already knew going into it, Ray had a, a difficult time at that high school, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it was great. So that was the first question I asked him. And then we went from there. <laughs> Um, as far as mentors are concerned, as far as um, me, I've, I've had many mentors. I had a, a bunch of figures in my life who were stepped up and became and showed me how to be a man because um, I was raised by my coaches. Um, the drive to, 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 to failure was an option, as what Re Reggie said, and I was I, I feared more of being complacent in where I was because where I was it was in the place I wanted to be so to, to stay there was it's scary that was the scary part to me to have to to deal with the things that I continuously dealt with with no end in mind is is uh is unfathomable so I my ambitions came from being more so scared it was the fear of failure or sometimes the fear of success as well but more so the fear of failure I couldn't do it thank you Karen, can I ask you about, you know, this, people that come and see safety, you may think, hey, this is a football movie. And yes, football is, is an element of it. But to me, it's really more a relationship movie. There's a relationship, obviously, that you all, that you play but between you and Ray. There's a relationship of, as has already been stated, between Ray and his mom, Ray and Faymar, Ray. I mean, there's, there's all these relationships that are all kind of tied into this movie. Yeah, definitely. And, and we, we've said this before that, um, family isn't just blood relation, you know, and I think that's what this movie is about. There are all these people in Ray's life that are rooting for him that aren't necessarily blood relation, but are there for him in that way. And, and Casey kind of acts as a big sister to even um, Faye and Daniel and everyone else is, is kind of just all working together to, to, to be there for Ray. Our uh, next question is going to be from Elisabetta Esposito from Gazzata del Sports in Italy. Hello. Uh, my question is for Jay and Ray. Uh, can you tell me something about the social role of sports and uh, how much could be important to be a part of a team? Well, well being a part of a team is, is always great because you have that sense of community and foundation. Uh, Along with that, you know, uh, you get to live with these guys when you're in a college environment. So uh, even on set, I felt like I was going through that experience of being on, at a D1 program, just how Ray was, you know, uh, and one of the best in the world. So uh, just being on the field and we have some talented guys on the field, uh, stunt performers and just football players who were really, really, really nice and and just welcome, welcome all the actors with open arms. So it was really fun. And I, I think the socials with that like team environment is needed. Um, as far as teams are concerned in society, I guess we go back to the, the two teams that mean the most at this current time, which is the Democratic and Republican Party. Um, and the importance of it in society is that currently those two teams need to come together as the United States of America and do something for everyone in America. And um, right. so to, to bring the importance of team to society, uh, the world needs help, uh, more so America needs help. And I hope that those two teams get together and do it for the team that we are together, which is America. And so in, in society, I think that's the important part of sport that needs to be taken part where working together is needed and necessary. Well said. Very well said. Camille Jefferson from uh, Disney News, you're up. Hi guys, um, this question is for Ray Ray. 
Uh, what would you say was the most challenging part of taking care of your brother for those first few months that everything was happening with your mom? And do you think that the movie was able to portray those emotions effectively? Um, the most difficult part about the first few months was, um, um, I guess, straddling the line of between of what, what I was able to do and what others were able to do. Um, being that I was moving in silence and not necessarily telling a lot of people what I was doing early on. It was just being alone in the, in the, in for the most part in my decision that was the toughest part. But once everyone found out, life became a lot easier. But then for a moment, it was harder because no one could help. But then eventually everyone was allowed to help. And it, uh, my teammates were always there. They were always guys that I could count on. And so even through the tougher times, I had people I could lean on. And that was uh, a God's gift, I, I guess. Thank you. Let's go to uh, Tim Haddock from That's It LA. Sorry, it's that, that's ITLA. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. A little confusing. Yeah, um, just a quick question about um, the people in the movie. I know there's lots of heroes in this movie and you can, you can pick from um, a big pool of them. But I wanted to know from Ray Ray and from, from, um, from Jay, who do they think is the hero of this movie and who are the bad guys? <laughs> Well, if, if you ask me, I'm going to have to go with Faymar. I think Faymar is the hero of the movie. You know, um, we wouldn't be here today if Faymar didn't exist. We wouldn't be talking of this, uh, this great, wonderful film and have this story if the situation with Faymar and Ray's mother, she's also a hero to me in this movie. Um, I don't think there's any really real bad guy, just a bad situation, you know? Um, you can't necessarily blame anyone for having rules or regulations prior to a situation. So uh, yeah, I don't think anyone had ill will. It's just a situation. Um, if, uh, if I had to pick a hero of the movie, uh, it'd probably be Faye Moore as well. Um, because even in real life, Faye Moore was the catalyst that made me step up. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't, I was, I was a teenager. I was crazy. I was young. I wasn't different from many other teenagers. Although I had a story, um, I hadn't been asked to step up and he, he put me in a position to, where he, he kind of brought leadership to me. And, and, and unfortunately I stepped in and I was ready to go. And, uh, I can appreciate that as far as bad guys in the, in the movie, um, I probably would call myself a bad guy in the movie. Reason being, it was, um, you know, looking back, you always feel like there's things you could have done differently in some situations that you could have possibly changed. And so me being not necessarily a perfectionist, but one person that wants to get a, a bunch of things right. Um, I feel like there were a lot of things during those times that I didn't get right, that I would much rather change now if looking back at it. I tell you, the boys at the apartment scene, when you go get Faymar and take him out of there, I was, I mean, I'm oh, in the cup yeah. saying, get out of there now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those guys. In there. Get out of there. <laughs> Thaddeus, how does it feel to, to hear people call you, uh, you know, kind of like the hero role of, of this movie? It, that's just crazy. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it's just amazing to be called the hero. I also think, you know, Ray is the hero for me, too. Because, I mean, he's he's saving me. I can go to foster care if he don't take care of me. And I really would call him a hero, too. And I guess I'm a hero, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's go to Sofia Serafina from Cinefilos in Italy. Hi, it's Sonia, but it's OK. <laughs> I I the little old Clemson boy, sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Ciao, guys, and thank you for the movie. You make me cry a lot, but uh, the story is so emotional. This is for Reginald, uh, mm -hmm. but it's also very funny. How did you find the balance to tell this story in the right way? And there is anything maybe that you changed during the making of the movie? Uh, uh, 
Well, you know, I make all kinds of movies. I've done comedies like House Party and Boomerang, and I've done dramas uh, like Marshall. Um, and what I loved about this movie, it was a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, I know that if you're, you know, in college, hanging out with your friends, you're going to have a good time. There's going to be funny incidents. If you're hanging out with your little brother, uh, you know, doing up to stuff, you're going to have fun. So that's a that's a natural part of the, the, the story what we're telling. And I thought those fun moments help set up the dramatic moments and vice versa. I mean, you know, that's life. Life has all those different layers to it. So, you know, you have fun and then the rug gets pulled out from under you and suddenly you feel the hardship uh, because things were going so well and then they aren't. And then, you know, when you're just, you know, look, you know, when we, you know, have faith walking in the rain on the way home, I mean, it's, you know, it's heartbreaking because, you know, this is a terrible situation. Uh, and as we were saying earlier, there's no villains. It's just the unfortunate aspects of that circumstance. So you can't even get mad at anybody. It's a bunch of people being forced to do things that they don't want to do. The coach's wife wants to give him a ride, but she can't because that would put him in even more trouble. So these terrible catch 22s that they're all trying to survive. And I, I, I like that. I like that people laugh and then 10 minutes later in the movie, they're crying. Uh, you know, I would have little test screenings and I'd invite friends over, have, you know, have some food, have some wine. And I watch them watch the movie. I sit in the back and I watch. In the last 15 minutes, a friend of mine just was, she was crying for 15 minutes. And I was sitting there going, I drink your tears. I'm so happy that I'm actually touching you emotionally, that you care about these characters. That's what I knew that the movie worked and it really made me, uh, made me grateful. Uh, and as for things I would want to do differently, always, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, you do it and then you go, Oh, now I get it. Uh, so hopefully this movie's a hit and I'll get a chance to get, you know, every time you make a movie, you, you challenge yourself. Uh, I, I love making a different type of movie every time. You know, that's why I like going, oh, I, I did an, uh, an animated movie. You know, now I'm doing a documentary. Now I'm doing a sports movie because you have to have that little bit of fear of like, this could not work out. Okay, I'm out here. <laughs> Bring your A game because you could fail. And that, that's part of the excitement. Just got a couple of minutes left. We'll go to uh, Laura Siracol. Hi, okay. So this is a fun question because the film is set in 2016, um, which many of the actors here were either young children uh, or tweens or um, in Davius cases, I don't think maybe not born yet. Um, so what was it like to, to be around 2006 elements, like the phone, um, the music, and just like the elements that they, that they had that kind of took, took me back, but I don't know about you guys, because you guys were probably really young. So this is to the <laughs> actors who had to be in those elements. Um, I will say that the most exciting part for me is I got to drive this turquoise uh, VW Bug when I was a child, because I was in 2006, I was like 10 or 11. That mm. was my dream car. I was like, when I turn 16, that is the car I'm getting. And so when I showed up on set and I saw that was my Casey's car, I took pictures with it, inside of it, outside of it. I was super excited. <laughs> For me, it was, uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun because I was actually Faymar's age during this time. So uh, to see Thaddeus, there just kind of just made me think about myself like wow you know I remember uh using the phone I had the flip phone and I remember and I had a sidekick and all that so I remember seeing all this stuff and thinking wow these are things I always wanted you know I wanted a flip phone so bad at that age and I didn't get one until I was what 18 my first phone so uh <laughs> it was definitely like a, a, a wish come true you know <laughs> it was fun 
For me, it was the baggy clothes. Like, I always, like, ever since I was little, I always wanted to, like, wear baggy clothes, but that kind of wasn't in style, because when I was born, it was 2008, and I guess in 2010, when I was just older and stuff, the whole style just changed. So it was just really cool for me to be able to wear baggy clothes, and it was just really fun. <laughs> the music really brought me back to it, listening to that amazing soundtrack of songs, and then having that party scene with the lean back. It was it was so much fun. It, it, it was an amazing soundtrack, and I'm excited for everybody to hear it. Hunter, I'll play on that, man. When they do the teaching Famar to dance, and Jay, I don't know if you were part of this, but the selection of the music for that, Earth, Wind, and Fire, I don't know if that was an homage yeah. back to those guys, but perfect. <laughs> absolutely perfect. This is Reggie. Reggie. <laughs> no, that, that's my jam. Uh, I mean, oh. you know, I love that whole era of music. I mean, to go from 70s, Earth, Wind, and Fire to 90s, to have, you know, T.I., Outkast, Trick Daddy, you know, uh, I love all those different eras of music. So then when we were preparing to shoot the movie, and I talked to Ray, and he talked about how important music was for him and how he listened to music both of the era, and he also listened to music his mom listened to. So I was like, ooh, that means I can justify going in, you know, both 90s music and 70s music uh, because both eras were really important to him. So I went to town. Great choice. High school grad of 1980. Couldn't have gotten any better uh, as far back. <laughs> hey, we, unfortunately, we're out of time, gang. Great movie. Looking forward to everybody getting a chance to see this. Kudos to everybody. Uh, and I can tell you that from Clemson, we appreciate uh, what you have done for this community, telling Ray's story. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. There are other stories, believe me, that, are, that can be told from this community, but I don't know that you'll find one more poignant than Ray's story. So job well done, gang. Job very well done. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Thank you. And with that, that's a wrap. Appreciate right. it. Great Happy holidays, guys, everybody. Thanks to, uh, for all the reporters. Thanks for uh, thanks, watching the movie thanks. and paying attention and caring. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you all. And be sure to watch Safety December 11th with your family. Oh, <laughs> 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 Throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs>